Hi, my name is Morten Yeh from flipnormals.com and today we're going to take a look at how we can sculpt the dragon inside of ZBrush. And usually when I start out sculpting, I I have some sort of reference in mind. And for this this little project, I made a reference sheet inside of Photoshop and I just I just put some pictures together of of dragons that I thought looked cool. And I recently went and watched How to Train Your Dragon 2. So, I mean, this tutorial <laughs> might just be an excuse to actually sculpt a dragon. And it was supposed to just be a bust, like a bust of a dragon. But, yeah, it turned out to be a, a full dragon. So whenever I start a sculpt, I, I always try to, like, keep the form in mind. And... That's the great thing about ZBrush, and like I'm right now, I'm working with Dynamesh. Is that I can just sort of freeform everything, and quickly add and subtract stuff without really thinking about topology and really being restricted by all this like technical nonsense. Um, so in the beginning, I try to work in the overall shape that I that I want, and I found a pose uh, of a dragon on my reference sheet that I really liked. So I'm gonna try and aim for for a pose inspired by that. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to give it this circular shape. The circular shape is gonna be, I mean, limited to the to the body, and then the wings, like you see now, are gonna come off it and be extended. So it's gonna have this, I guess, intimidating. Um, Kind of pose and something i do a lot is check my silhouette i i usually do that with like just a flat white color material oh, this is great for checking stuff like intersections and tangents and stuff like that and i try to i try to avoid detailing for for a very long time actually just working with the basic shape uh even though i mean right now it looks like some sort of fat, ugly butter for you, whatever. Um, and that's sort of like, you're gonna stay in that stage for quite a while. And I remember in the beginning when I started sculpting, it, it took me a while to get past this stage. It can be quite depressing because your model can look like, well, awful for quite a while. And you just gotta have like the final, pro like the final product in mind when you're sculpting and just, be confident enough that that you can get there at some point. Uh, you might be spending five, ten hours on a sculpt, and if you sit there for for too long and just tell yourself that, oh man, this looks like crap, then it's probably gonna look like crap. So it's it's great to to keep that in mind that it it will look great. Uh, it just might take a while to to actually get there. And so, like, the wings here are going to be quite, um, sort of like, a centerpiece for, for the sculpt because they're going to be completely extended and they're going to take quite a lot of focus. I want to, I want to invest a lot, a lot of time in them to get the, to get the right shape and the right feel. And for some of this stuff, like, Anatomy wise, you gotta just, I mean, you gotta know some of your, your creature anatomy and stuff to actually pull this off. And looking at birds or something like bats could be, could be beneficial for this. And again, it, it's, it's, it's being kept very simple for, I don't know, two thirds of of the actual sculpt. I don't start detailing until very late in the in the project. Um but starting to starting to refine my shape a little more. You can see I, I still try to, to keep this sort of circular shape to the body while extending the wings sort of in a in a contrasting direction. Uh, just to give the just to give the piece some more visual interest. And these legs are, I don't know, 
these legs were tricky, but uh, yeah, I think they turned out quite quite funny. Um, I don't know if they really fit the the actual sculpt, but I wanted to sort of stay away from this sort of classical fantasy dragon look, which is why I, I really like the designs that Nicola Nico Malay did for uh, for How to Train Your Dragon. Um, I don't know if he did. I don't know how many he did for for the sequel, but um, the dragons in that one were cool as well. So I'm trying to draw a lot of inspiration for that. I'm also looking at some of the dragon design for Game of Thrones, just because that's more realistic. So I'm trying to combine those two, um, just to get something interesting. And I want to get this sort of uh, big and like I, I want it to look like a big dragon like it's it's a muscular dragon um a lot of especially fantasy dragons i feel like are very sleek and elegant this i don't i don't want this to be it's got a like a very dominant jaw and that's something i want to i want to focus on and again you see me checking it with a flat color just to see if the silhouette still works um if the wings are are blocking anything um, it, it is also a little tricky to, to actually see what it's going to look like in its final form because I don't start posing until very late because I'm working with symmetry at the moment. So, and that's just to save time, um, really. I tend to do that for a lot of projects, you know, work with symmetry and then uh, towards the end you, you start roughing it up and, and like making the two different sides obviously different. Uh, for this project, there is there isn't that much time, so it's it doesn't make sense to actually sculpt asymmetrically. And and one one part I want to focus on is is the chest area because because its wings are so extended. Um, I feel like especially for something like a dragon, uh, I would imagine that you need quite a, a dense chest with a lot of muscle in there to actually to pull those wings if you want to, if you imagine the, uh, like a dragon being a, a massive and spectacular creature, you would need a, a lot of muscle. So I'm trying to make the chest area protrude a lot and really be apparent. And for the tail, it's, um, yeah, I want to, I, I wanted to have a lot of different visual elements and not just be like a, like a lizard tail, where it's just like from, from the back and just going down. Uh, but I want to create some interest, like some visual interest in it, even though it'll be sort of in the background, I think. Um, but we'll see what happens. Still trying to preserve the the shape. And you can see the shape hasn't changed that much. Like it's pretty set now that what the shape that it's, the overall shape that the dragon is going to be. And still not... Um, concerning myself too much with details. I mean, I've started putting I've started putting in some details in like bony landmarks for for wings and and the tail and in the face and and things like that, but it's still everything is still very vague, like very vague. And these parts are going to be a I think I'm gonna go back and forth a lot just because I want to get the right feel from these wings and, and you're gonna see the wings change a lot during this video um, Also remember to save your work Yeah, that was And and a trick you see me doing there is when you select uh, your mask off a, a part of a an object you can uh, control click on the the border of the mask and unmasked masked area and it'll sort of it'll smooth out the mask area for make for for a better transition so when you move your unmasked part around it, it won't leave harsh edges yeah and these are the feet that i wasn't too keen on i mean i, I feel like it started to look too much like a duck uh, so I'll, I'll 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 change that in a bit for some more stylized more stylized feet and sort of extend the tail as well. Like if you if you look at it now, there's not 
uh, original sh original shape that I had kind of disappeared because I made the tail a little too short. So I'm trying to play with the proportions of the tail um, and also the the low the lower body. Just here we're starting to define where the the bones in the wings are are going to be. Uh, this this isn't like sort of set in stone. These are this is just like a a, a guide for me to to know how to shape the wings better. So, I mean, I won't be detailing this for a, for a long time. I'm just trying to gauge the proportions, seeing what works, what doesn't. I also a few times try to put in like, uh, like front legs, but I never really quite thought that they fit in. It started looking like a weird gargoyle, um, and obviously you don't want that. So, and and in terms of the face, we're also going to spend we're also going to spend some time on the face later because that's sort of going to be what you you look at the most. And would you see me? Do there was you see you, you you saw the holes in the mesh that that can occur when you use dynamesh and two surfaces get too close together. So the trick I, I do for, for fixing those holes is I use the inflate brush, just inflate it so the mesh sort of uh, intersects again, and um, then I just remesh it and smooth it out. Just playing with the stomach area, putting in some muscle, and checking the silhouette again. I'm starting to define the the planes a little more um, with the trim dynamic brush. It's really good for that. And the clay the clay builder brush, uh, like an alphaless clay builder brush is also very good for defining surfaces, but I, I really like the trim dynamic brush for that. I won't be using it that much because I want to keep this piece fairly organic from now on. Um, but the the trim dynamic brush can be very useful in the beginning, I think, and also for hard surface models. So now we're um, looking at the tail again, and it's feeling a little off because of 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 the length. So what I'll do is I'll extend it down to get this sort of semicircle uh, design going. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing with those feet, like these platypus feet that just, yeah, they'll come into play later. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work out. And and when you're doing these sort of long tubular things like tails and things like that, they need to be need to be smooth and and not have too many bumps in it. You, I find it really useful to just go back and forth with different kind of smoothing algorithms like holding down shift, holding down shift, letting go of shift while smoothing, um, which is really great. And you see me going out a lot as well, even though I'm not checking the, the apparently the silhouette with the flat color, I'm still sort of gauging the silhouette and zooming out, squinting, looking, how does the design look from afar, just to make sure that everything fits together or something, to make sure something doesn't pop out too much. And these, this weird little nose area started to bother me. I felt like it looked too much like a bat. Um, so I'm pushing that back in. And this area of the wing is is an interesting one because there be there needs to be like a bend halfway up between the base, like the shoulder joint, and and where the sort of like phalanges of of the wings extend. And you'll see me play around with that a little later in the video, trying to figure out how the muscles should attach and stuff. And this this tail thing, like um, like you you definitely notice from like how to train your dragon. Um, where they, they play around with these a lot. And I think it, it looks cool and it makes sense for sort of like balancing 
So I, I want to try to incorporate that into my model. I'm trying to figure out how that intersects with the wing and the and the the lower part of the, the like like the tiny wing underneath the big wing. Like how do how does how do those two like sort of work together and intersect? Is something I thought a lot about. Now these legs, I've changed them quite a bit from sort of like standard. What should we call them? Dragon hind legs or whatever. Um, but I thought they had an interesting shape to them, so I'm going to try to keep going with that. And you can see now I'm just trying to fill in the the chest area to, like we talked about earlier, um, trying to define those muscles and because I feel like it needs a lot of muscle to pull um, those big wings. And the play between the upper part and the lower part of the wing is I, I want them not to they they I want them to have a similar shape. So it looks like a, a miniature version of the big wing, but I want them to be in different positions. So I'll probably extend the upper part of the wings a little more and then separate the lower part just so you can see them and, and make for an interesting silhouette. And and for the pose, like I'll try to get as close to the final pose like symmetrically as I can but there'll be a lot of changes once I start going out of symmetry mode um, but just so I don't have to change the model too much because then you need sculptural changes and that just takes more time and I want to try and play around with sort of the the length of the neck and the stature of the sort of the jaw with the ratio like like length between the the upper part of the leg and the lower part of his legs but I'm quite happy with those legs I, I think they look interesting I'm gonna stick with those but proportion wise I still think they're a little off by uh, looking at his faces his face is, is just massive right now so that'll need to either be scaled down or the legs need to be scaled up And trying to make the wings a little more dynamic um, in shape, and as well with the face, not necessarily making the the face more dynamic, but sort of trying to enclose it, making this sort of crown around his face, so you really there's some contrast between the shape in the front of his face where his eyes are, and the back of his face where his spikes are, so we can sort of. Um, distinguish that and I, I really like this big jaw that he has because he is this sort of muscular type dragon I want him to have like a big jaw <laughs> quite a massive underbite but that could be that could be quite interesting for the design um, and I and and when I when I do work in Dynamesh, I, I I tend to stay quite low for a long time, just because I don't. If I if I do if I have the freedom to add detail, I will. I I just can't control myself. So in order to limit myself, I really try to stay low for as long as possible until I really can't get any more out of that sub D level, and then I'll go up. Um, and I'll stay in Dynamesh mode for a long time until I eventually uh, retopologize it and sort of optimize my mesh. You see the wings now have changed quite a bit from the beginning and I like them a lot more now. They're a lot more visually pleasing to me. They have this uh, sort of towering tallness to them now whereas before I thought they were too clunky. And just you see the definition of the phalanges in, in the wings but they, they, they'll change. They're just again they're just a guide reference for now the face is it feels too thin for for what he is so that'll need to be widened and and, and worked on and the main brushes that i use throughout this tutorial and i guess generally are um the clay build-up brush 
with and without alpha. I tend to use the clay builder brush with an alpha in the beginning just because it gives me a lot of detail for free. And once I get into actually building more the the solid forms, I'll I'll turn off the alpha because it gives you a nice smoothness to the model. Um, then I use the move brush like all the time. I think 80% of the time I'm, I'm just using the move brush. Um, and then sometimes the move topological because it's very practical for, for a mesh with a lot of close things together. And then the Damien standard and standard brush as well is very useful, especially the Damien standard brush for this, this mesh where you have these, um, you can make these sort of bony protrusions or scales and just really hard edges. Uh, if you invert the brush, like if you hold down Alt while you're using it, you, you make a peak instead of like a, a valley, and you can make some really nice and strong shapes with it. You can get almost the same result with the standard brush. I just feel like the, the Damien standard brush works better for me. Um, but you should definitely experiment with that and just see what you can get at. And at this stage, I guess we're like um, more than halfway into the sculpt, and like we haven't really, def I mean, we've started to define some general details like the placement of the eyes and nostrils and, and some shapes in terms of like horns and, and stuff, but it's, it's nothing like compared to what, like if we would finalize the sculpt, that, that, that still comes later because I still don't want to bog down. As soon as I start detailing, I feel like that's when the sculpt is sort of, coming to an end like the detailing part is really fun but um i feel like you start to limit yourself once you start detailing you don't really want to take that detail away again um it's like once your paint is dry you're like ah i really like the way that this feels or looks now but maybe i could change it a little bit but then you would have to redo your work and so working on like low rest stuff for for a while until you're really satisfied with the design i feel like helps a lot Mm. And these these uh, protrusions got a little too much. Um, it's a little too evil for me. Just a personal preference, I guess. But you can see, in terms of like overall design, like not uh, not a lot of things are 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 changing now. Um, the silhouette is pretty much there. Most of the the forms have been designed and uh we're slowly moving into the detail part now now what i'll do here is i realized that my face because i, I use c remesher to remesh um my model and the face receives sort of like the same density as the rest of the body so there's not enough detail to actually go in and, and sculpt properly here so um i've actually uh isolated the face and when you're in isolate mode you can press uh, Control W, and when you press Control W, you'll automatically assign um, a poly group to your selection. So I take that selection, I go down to a lower sub D level, and I subdivide the mesh. And whenever I subdivide what's isolated, you only sub that subdivide that part of the mesh. So you'll end up with a higher subdivision level on the isolated part. Um, this is really great for, I mean, just like a concept sculpt, I guess obviously this wouldn't work for like a production model because it, it leaves a lot of artifacts um, on the border between the the unsubdivided mesh and the subdivided mesh. And here you see me going in with a clay builder brush without an alpha because it has this really nice and soft feel to it. Um, and it's really good for producing volumes. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, it's, it's really, it's a lovely brush for for the once you get into the, the detailing part, I think. Just adding some random horn detail. I don't know what you want to call that. And you can see we, we've worked in the expression now with the, the clay buildup brush and sort of defined some of the, the creases with the Damien standard brush. And this is, I just go back and forth like this really. Um, bigger volumes and bigger shapes. I. I make with the, the clay builder brush and then I 
make gaps and and finer details with the with the Damien standard brush. So like here, making the creases for the eyelids and the eye socket, pushing in the eye a little bit more. Kind of looks like a rhino. It's like a weird bat rhino dragon thing. Oh well. Oh, another brush that's really um, a good for this sort of stuff is the print brush. Um, when you have a, a mouth like this and you want to <laughs> close it and you can't really go in there with the move with the move topological brush, you just use the pinch brush to sort of like pull the mouth a little closer together. It's also really great for making uh, sharp creases and, and things like that. I wanted to find a more a thicker brow um, to sort of complement his thicker jaw and his his, his stature. His ear is quite wide. And now we actually start getting into sort of like the final detail of it where we uh, we take our time where we place things. Um, so these are the phalanges for the lower part of the wing. Um, right now the wing is still very thick so I'll go in with the clay builder brush. I'll just smooth it out quickly and go in with the clay builder brush to just roughen up the, the wing. And generally, I don't use the smooth brush um, too much because I feel like it tends to destroy my model a little too much. Um, I want to keep some of that random detail that I get from the clay builder brush in the early parts of the, the process. So if I do want to smooth out, I, I tend to use a brush on top or like subtract some stuff. It takes a little longer, but I think the end result is, is a lot nicer than if you just go over your model constantly and smooth. I mean, there's something to be said for a very clean model. Uh, I'm not saying that. I just, um, I prefer my models not to be like super clean. I, I like them to have a little bit of bumpiness and, and roughness in there, sort of like a, I feel like it, it makes them more real, this sort of perfect, um, Barbie doll kind of polished look, but I guess I mean that's just a personal preference. So, and yeah, you see how the the builder brush here is is used just to create a little random texture in the wing, and this is the one without an alpha. So, you just you just go into the alpha menu and press alpha off. You can do that with any brush. Just checking my silhouettes once again. And now I feel like like the face is a little vague, like some of the shapes, like it's it's quite defined, but the some of the shapes could use some use some like sharpening on them, like especially around the eyes, because you always tend to focus your attention to like towards eyes. So you I, I wanna just polish that area a little bit. Let's make some bumps, some, just some sort of visual interest, again to just sort of like pull you in, that it like, these tiny bumps create a little bit of contrast on smooth surfaces, so you'll tend to, to look there more than just on like bare surfaces. And now we get into the posing part, um, where I go out of symmetry mode, and um, I just sort of move the obvious parts, especially around the, the middle. Um, that's where you really start to notice that a, a model is symmetrical. So I want to, I mean, I've made him a little up sided in the face now. Uh, not too much because we'd be turning him and probably looking at him from a little bit of a side view. So we won't actually see the, the, the center line that much. Um, but still. So, um, I want to create some more dynamic pose, sort of like he's about to land or, um, or just took off. <laughs> uh, I guess more like he took off, like he just took off. So I want to get this forward uh, dynamic posing in the character. Um, and obviously offsetting everything so it's not perfectly centered uh, will help a lot. Um, so sort of like twisting the head and curving the spine more and especially the tail. Like because the tail, like the tail is a very thin, uh, piece 
part of the piece, but it's a very prominent part. Um, and you can really play around with this a lot. So what I want to do is I want to try to encircle him and sort of like lead your eye with the tail and like pull it underneath him, but then so like twist it around. And I'll be checking the silhouette a lot because once you start getting into posing, like right now I've been checking the silhouette just like symmetrically where everything looks nice and, and there isn't too much intersection between different parts of the body. But once you start getting into posing where everything will crisscross and I want to try to eliminate uh, tangents as much as, as much as possible. I mean, obviously you can't like remove all tangents all the time, but you want to get rid of the, like, the worst of them. So we want to make some contrasting shapes here, like some like straight lines going into like this big curve of the tail. Um, trying to extend the body a little more and playing with the proportions just to balance it a bit more. Yeah, checking the silhouette again. Now I'm gonna pose the legs because the legs, like <laughs> this guy doesn't have hands. He has wings, he has massive wings for hands. So we wanna try and get some sort of gesture into the legs, the very <laughs> masculine pose there. <laughs> um, but yeah, trying to get some sort of dynamic pose into the legs. And I guess it is, it does have some human elements to it which does make it look kind of freaky <laughs> but uh i, I think i want to we can try to use that to our advantage to sort of got this like leaping pose that a person would maybe make but like exaggerated a little bit more and it's great when you're working on like a model like this like having sub d's is great because you can jump down to the lower levels and work on the mesh there when you're doing your posing and like I'm doing here, jump back up to do like sculptural corrections, just because like, especially now where the body's twisted and, and stretched, um, you want to squash the the ribs on one side and maybe extend them on the other. Just adjust the wing a little bit more just to get it further down, just a little more away from the other wing. And now there's a slight problem with the lower wing in the back because now you can't really see the the silhouette that will. So we'll try to, to pull it down a little bit. But that's really like what the last part of the, the sculpting process process is like. It's just fiddling with tiny things. I really think the interesting part is the beginning part where you're really you're investing a lot more time there in the sculpting and designing um, because you want to make everything work together. I mean there's something to be said for, for the detailing part because that's like the icing you put on there, but you wanna like, you wanna wait with that, really. Um, like I said, as soon as you start putting all the details in, that's when you get, you get too attached to your work and you don't really wanna change it after that. Or at least that's my experience. Yeah. Getting close and trying to put some final touches on the pose. And see the silhouette works a lot better now. Um, trying to fix the tail because it's still, it still like intersects or like crosses the legs. We want to try and separate it a little bit more, pulling it out to the side so we clear the legs. Um, you see there, now it goes between the legs instead of looking like it extends one leg. And then just like towards the end here, we just want to add like some final touches of like noise, basically. <laughs> um, just some like slight visual interest. Again, I'm focusing my details around the face because usually that's where you want to look. Um, so because the wings are such a big entity on this guy, um, I don't feel like I need to deal, detail them as much. So I want to keep it like a balance between uh, visual interest on his face. So there will kind of be like two focal points in this piece where we one will be the face, which will be quite small, like overall. And then 
than the wings. But I'm hoping by creating more visual noise, <laughs> I guess noise, in the face, you'll try to look at that one as well. And I didn't really have like a like a alpha handy for scales, so I just used the clay builder brush where I just like sculpted something quickly and then invert the brush. Damien standard to outline it. Now this rear part is really annoying me, so like you see it's kind of conflicting with the wing again. So I'll also want to pull this part down um, just to separate it just a little bit. You can see there it just hits the tip of the wing there. Um, but just to clear it and really make the silhouette perfect at the end here. Yeah, and, and there we go. That's um, that's my dragon sculpt. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And um, again, like when when doing this sort of sculpting, I guess this applies for a lot of things. You don't want to just I mean, this isn't just a sculpting a dragon tutorial. I I hope you can sort of abstract like the concepts that we talked about here and and apply those to to other pieces that you want to make. Thanks for watching, and I'll I'll see you guys next time.